obviously a career high, but also, um, so we know, having, we know you haven't scored that much before, but 70% shooting was, was pretty amazing to get there. Have you just haven't had, ever had a night like that where you just felt like everything was kind of going in? Yeah, um, yeah, man, my teammates just kept finding me. Um, you know, felt, they felt I had, it go, I had it going, and they just kept giving me the ball and kept just setting screens and let me just operate. And uh, coach just drawing stuff up, too. So, you know, they gave me the confidence to go out there and just be aggressive. Um, but, man, just I want to do all that and win, too. You know, I just feel like if you do all that and lose, it's kind of like an empty stat to me. That's how I go. And um, just happy we got the dub and, you know, everybody's just playing well. Cam was in the locker room saying that you've been working on your offensive game basically every year when guys aren't watching. Uh, what are some of the things that you worked on, particularly offensively, to be able to shoulder a load like you did tonight? Um, man, just playing on ball a little bit. Like I said, um, in an interview was just, you know, I had guys that were out and, you know, all the work that I was work, working on and pick and roll and, you know, maybe if they read one through five ISO situations, um, I had the opportunity to. And... I mean, just coming from Phoenix, you know, our mentality was to win a championship. And I know when it comes down to any game in the playoffs that they're going to try to take the ball out of books and seize hands and make it make me, Cam, and DA make a play. So kind of having that mindset coming to the summer, doing all that. And then as the year kept going, just kept getting better. So that was just, I had to get better. I always get better every year, but I just knew. I had to create a little bit more, you know, for us to be the best, for the Suns to be the best team when I was there. Um, but now just coming here and being in this office and just, you know, playing a little bit more free, um, it's just, it's just, it had to, had to get there a little faster now, you know. Um, so just working out, just a lot of on ball and just ball screen, making reads and, you know, ISO situations. Now, we've seen guys who shoulder offensive loads then take a back seat maybe on the other end of the floor. How are you able to increase your offensive workload while also still being that dominant defender that you are? Defense always comes first to me. Um, I could play 40, and if I give up every bucket, I'll be pissed off. Um, still kind of mad I gave up a couple buckets. I lacked a little bit. But always defense first. I mean, even when I was in Phoenix, I had to score. My biggest thing was always still guard, you know. It was tough. It was tough. I was getting really tired. But that's just the growth, and I had to go through them pains. And um, just coming here now and doing the same things, just trying to be aggressive. But also, like always, defense comes first before anything. Um, that's just who I am. And I just think defense wins championships, and that's how you win games. You know, offense will come, and you just keep getting better every year. Um, eventually, you could, you know, score a little bit, but... I always had that mindset defensively. Mikhail, before the game, JV was talking about you and Spencer Dinwiddie kind of being the, the vocal locker room leaders for this group right now. And I saw you talking with JV before the game about some stuff. I'm just curious from your vantage point coming in, do you almost feel like in a way, and obviously given like the 45 tonight, you're kind of trying to make this like your team in a sense to kind of lead these guys with this new era? Um, it's a good question. Um, yeah, I just try to... It's tough, I know, for me personally, because I don't want to be that new guy to think that just talking too much and stuff. But, you know, I just believe in this team a lot. And that's why me and JV was talking. We were talking in practice, just like, and the team talking, because, you know, I think this team could do really good. And we have the players, we have the coaches, we have the mindset. So just trying to lead. And I know just trying to do whatever it takes and try to see what our best offense can be, our best defense can be, just because I know, I feel like, if, you know, we still got months left, but if we keep getting better and keep learning and keep growing together, I feel like we'll be a scary team that teams don't want to play against because, you know, we have five guys at all times that's going to be out there defending and, you know, playing for one another. So, yeah, I just try to come in here and just bring the mentality of trying to win. Um, it's funny because everybody else is the same way. You know, every if I say something, they're always like, yeah, like, for sure, like, that's what we want. So, you know, the guys in the locker room and the coaches make it so much easier for me. So, yeah, I appreciate them so much. A lot of times you have to play the best score on the other team, um, make sure he doesn't get hot. What's it like tonight to be the guy that got hot? And what's it like for a team 
defending a guy who does get on a roll like that looked like you kind of broke their spirit a little bit. It was a close game for three quarters until you got hot. Um, yeah, I mean, never scored 40 in my life, so uh, it's the first. But um, like I said, just being aggressive, um, just trying to do whatever it takes to win, and that's what really comes down to, like I said, just winning the game. Um, even if I score 40 or I score five, like – if I was to score five and I was aggressive and we won, I will feel good anyway. So just trying to win, man, just do whatever it takes, honestly. Um, first of all, two things. What, what do you think of this Brooklyn Bridges nickname that you've been given? Do you like it? No, I love it. I, I love it. I love it a lot. Uh, it fits. Simple. It makes sense. <laughs> so it's really dope. I, uh, I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, the other thing, when you got traded here, you, you said, well, wow, you know, getting traded for Kevin Durant, like I can understand that because of what a great player he is. Is any part of you want to prove, you know, that you are a worthy, uh, you know, trade for him, that you can you can do things here too? Is that, is that anywhere in your head? Um, yeah, sort of, but, you know, you're trading a, a future Hall of Famer, got to average – damn near 30 for his career. So, you know, I'm just trying to continue to get better and get to a point where I can score a little bit more. But no, not really, man. I think it's simple sometimes. Um, I mean, that team over there, you know, adding a piece like KD and TJ is is big time. I think defensively I might, you know, you know, d play better, you know, but KD don't lack on defense. But as it brings another dimension for them to score the ball, you know, yeah, I'm confident in myself scoring the ball, but that man has been doing it for all these damn years and doing really good and efficient with it too. So um, I always understand, but um, just coming here, just it's kind of just a new step just to grow, you know. Um, I feel like I was growing in Phoenix, but when you got guys like CP, Hall of Famer, Book going to be a Hall of Famer, and Book's younger than me. So you know what I'm saying? So it's going to be tough for my path to – to get there because you know, the guys in front of me um, just slowly getting better, slowly getting better. But now just being in a situation, I kind of got to learn and grow up a little bit faster and excited for opportunity. Um, just, I don't know, I feel like I, I was, this, I think it was the perfect time, and I promise you, because I feel really confident before I got traded. And it's just, I just say it's all perfect timing, honestly. Mikhail, as you mentioned, you've never scored 40 before. And as you start this new chapter, like you just um, talked about, how special was it to do it in front of your mom and to hand over that new jersey with your new number to her? Um, oh, everything, man. Just uh, seeing her over there and having my career high. I might need her, of course, at every game. <laughs> but uh, I just know she's excited. I know people are blowing her line up as well. And... It's just, I know she was just big happy over there, and just, it makes me happy. So, you know, it's just, she's the best person in the world. So just happy she got to see it and being right there. You got two for you. I mean, did you have a shot tonight where you just kind of felt like to yourself, you know, I'm, I'm kind of cooking right now? Um, yeah, I just, I just, it's kind of my teammates. You know, I think every time, and the coaches, every time I come to the tight end, um, tight end, timeout. They just all gassed up. They get me hyped up. So that's when I kind of really feel it. And they just keep telling me, keep going, keep cooking. Um, and in crowd, too, you know, I feel like every every bucket I scored, it got a little bit louder. It's a little bit louder. And um, so they, they got me gassed up, too. And it's kind of going off that. I mean, I think you had 28 through three quarters, you know, so almost as much in the fourth. And it was a pretty back-and-forth game up until the fourth. Just how much of it was you felt like the correct input, for lack of a better phrase, was you needing to kind of – go off a bit more in the fourth quarter to kind of seal the game? Um, yeah, I just, I, just, I just had it going, and my teammates found me every time. If it was anybody else, Spence, Cam, both Cams, you know, anybody, you know, they would have they had it too. I just, I just came in, and I was just feeling good, and they just kept finding me, and um, they just had a lot of trust in me.